Hello, Brevity readers. Today's blog is a little different because I want to show you my real research process for finding out if a publisher is the real deal. I've seen a wave of new publishing scams recently, and we all have to know how to protect ourselves before we buy into a story with a very unhappy ending. I recently got an email from a writer friend, and she asked me, Hi, Allison. Trio House Press are sponsoring a manuscript contest, the Aurora Polaris Creative Nonfiction Award. In addition to the monetary prize, they will also publish the winning entry. Do you know anything about this press, and would you recommend it for a submission, whether part of the contest or not? Asked my writer friend. Now, I hadn't heard of them, so my first stop was the Alliance of Independent Authors. Now, the Alliance of Independent Authors has a wonderful page that is book, award, and contest ratings. And here, they're really clear about why are we judging these places and how are we judging these places. They're guiding principles that it's there to recognize the writers, not to make a whole lot of money. There's a clear, transparent judging process. You're not giving up key rights. And there's no weird upsells like, hey, Buy a whole bunch of stickers for $70 to put on your book and say, I won a prize that nobody's ever heard of. Now, down here, they have their ratings and reviews. There's a key to tell you what each of the ratings means. And you can either scroll alphabetically through the list to see what's there, what's recommended, what's not. Or I can just go ahead and type in Trio Press. And when I discover, hey, it's not listed there, I'm at, okay, I need to do more research. It's neither good nor bad as far as the Alliance of Independent Authors is concerned. So my next step is a basic Google search, Trio House Press. It's a good sign that they own their domain name. And as I scroll, I can see, oh, they are going to AWP. So they're a member of AWP. They've invested money in their publishing business. Now, scammers don't usually come to AWP because either they're a foreign company and they don't have a visa, or they just don't want to look people in the eye. It's a good sign that they have an account with Submittable. It's a good sign that they have an Instagram, that they're a member of the community of literary magazines and presses. And hey, I'm going to note that down because that might be a place I want to look for more publishers in the future if I'm helping an author client shop for publishers. I can see that they have a LinkedIn. They have an account with bookshop.org. And I also double check, they have an account over at Poets and Writers. They're members of poetsandwriters.org. Over there, I can check out their profile on poetsandwriters.org, which is another place where you can research many small presses. Notice that they've listed some specific authors. I can check and see, are any of these people I know or people my friends know? It's very clear that they have guidelines. They have a long response time, as do so many publishers these days. And hey, it's good to know they accept unsolicited submissions. You don't have to have an agent to submit to them. So not only are we finding out, yes, Trio Press is extremely legit. We're also finding out more opportunities for ourselves or for the other writers that we know. The next thing I do is I visit Trio House's actual website. And what I'm looking here for is there's a clear statement of who they are and what they do. Things are spelled correctly. That's always a good sign of a careful eye. They have interesting looking covers, covers that I would be proud to have my book be next to, covers that look professional and that look like they're going to help sell the book. I can also go ahead and take a look specifically at their contest page. And here's another green flag. They have listed specific judges. So for example, their trio award judge for a first or second book of poetry is Jessica Q. Stark. She's a poetry editor at Agni, which is another legit magazine. She's an assistant professor of creative writing at the University of North Florida. She has legit credits. All of these elements are stacking up to show that this is the real deal. Be very aware if a contest hides who the judges are or they're just not specific about it, that probably means their judges' opinions aren't going to make a great big difference to your career. 
Then I'm going to head over to Twitter, and I'm going to check out the press on Twitter. This lets me take a look at how they're supporting their authors by their public presence. It lets me know a little bit about who they are, what kind of things they support, what kind of things they're in favor of. And as I scroll down through, I'm also noticing they're very supportive of BIPOC authors, and I think that's a really good sign. I can also take a look back up at the very top, and I can see, oh, hey, I know Sean Thomas Doherty. He's a great poet, and Sean follows Trio House Press. And there's 122 other people who I follow who also follow Trio Press, so that's a good sign, too. I can also take a look here and Google the specific contest. Oh, look, other organizations are tweeting about it as well. That means at least one other organization thinks they're the real deal. Then I think to myself, oh, hey, isn't one of my friends publishing with Trio House Press? And I take a look, and Casey Mulligan Walsh's book, The Full Catastrophe, All I Ever Wanted, Everything I Feared, is forthcoming from Motina Books, a different publisher entirely, one that I already know is the real deal. My last stop, if I found any signs of worry, if the website looked bad or the cover looked bad or the social media presence was iffy or non-existent, at that point, I would visit Writer Beware. And this is a great site to read regularly. Victoria Strauss not only names names, she shows what scams are made of so that you will recognize the ingredients when and if you encounter them. So I go back and I tell my friend, yeah, Trio Press seems legit. And in my email response to her, I ask her, consider what you want. Are you really hoping for the prize? Do you want the money? Do you want a specific judge to see your work? And keep querying while all that happens. It's really rare that you'll have to choose between a contest with a particular publisher and another offer from an agent or another publisher, but it sure is great to have that as an option if it happens. Once I know the publisher is for real, I file that away in my mental records and share their contest info on social media. I've already checked them out, so if my endorsement saves another writer some time, that's literary citizenship that I can contribute. Whether or not literary contests are for you, this process works for any opportunity, whether that's publishing, signing your kid up for a sports team, or choosing your colonoscopy provider. What's their online presence? Are they on any watchdog sites? Are they members of professional organizations? What's online about what they're offering right now? Do I like the look of it? Do people I trust trust them? Is their public presence professional and a personality that I can connect with? It only takes a few minutes to find the answers, but the confidence in your own judgment lasts forever. Happy writing.